Hello and welcome to Sailor, where we take time out each weekday to pause, catch our breath, draw near to God and refresh our spirits. I will stop and breathe in your presence, just breathe, just breathe. Today's episode is inspired by a BBC article that I read on the 10th of July. Now, if you can't remember what was going on that week, it was one where everyone in the cabinet seemed to resign, including, later on, Boris. I'm sure many of us were wondering what on earth was going on. What prompted so many ministerial resignations all in one go? Well, that's when I happened to see an article on the Beeb. Sophie Rayworth was interviewing the former House Secretary, Sajid Javid, on his resignation and he mentioned the National Prayer Breakfast, which he had attended the previous Tuesday. If you're not sure what that is, the National Parliamentary Prayer Breakfast is an annual event and recognises the contribution that Christianity makes to the national life of the UK. The event took place in Westminster Hall this year, and the main speaker was Reverend Les Isaac, who founded Street Pastors. He spoke on the theme of serving the common good. But what could have happened at this event to prompt a wave of ministers resigning? Let's hear what Sajid Javid had to say. I've been given the benefit of the doubt again and again. And then on Tuesday morning, I went to this national prayer breakfast in Parliament. And uh, sounds might sound a bit strange, but I was listening to the sermon by this amazing man, Reverend Les Isaac. You know, he started Street Pastors. and I was listening to him talk about the importance of integrity in public life. And uh, just focusing on that, I made up my mind. I went straight back to my office and drafted the resignation letter and went to see the Prime Minister later in the day. In the Bible, James talks about how being double-minded brings instability. And in Psalm 86, David asks God to give him an undivided heart. To walk with integrity means to live in accordance with your deepest values, to be honest and to keep your word. We should all be challenged to live our lives out in this way, to not be double-minded, for our yes to be yes and our no to be no. And this is an especially important trait to have in any sort of leadership role. Jesus doesn't just care about what gets done, but how things get done too, in both our personal and publicly facing life. There shouldn't be a divide between private and public. Our character should remain the same. As Reverend Les Isaac was talking about integrity that day, he was communicating the heart and character of God. Our God is a God of integrity and faithfulness. He keeps his word. And as we were made in his image, We are called from our depths to live like that too, to reflect his character. Whether he knew it or not, I believe that Sajid Javid, along with other ministers who resigned off the back of what they heard that day, had an encounter with the heart of God. I love that so much because it shows that whether we know him or not, he's still speaking to us and calling us closer to his heart. God can use a black Pentecostal pastor to speak to a conservative Muslim MP. The other element at the prayer breakfast was worship. Later on, we're going to listen to a song called We Seek Your Kingdom, which was one of the songs sung in worship at the prayer breakfast. The words that come out of our mouths, spoken or sung, are powerful. Imagine a room full of people, MPs included, singing these words. Andy Flanahan, one of the co-authors of that song and who heads up Christians in Politics, led some worship at the event, and he said this. There was a couple of moments as people sang the hymns, but then also there was amazing time after Les Isaacs preached. We had the privilege of leading a time of response, and you could hear a pin drop in the room. 
It was just electric, one of those moments where you're fully aware of the presence of Almighty God, really aware of that ultimate authority. I knew something profound had happened. I'd experienced it. As I was travelling home, I could still feel it. Worship opens our hearts and minds up to Christ. When he's in the room, the atmosphere changes. When we encounter his presence, we become more aware of his holiness, however much or little we know him. And I believe too that being in an atmosphere of worship makes us more receptive to hear what he's saying to us and for those words to take root. As Andy also said, Things do happen when we put God in the place he deserves. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Jesus being at the centre of it all. Let's pray for ourselves and our leaders too, that we would be people of integrity and that Jesus would be firmly at the centre and take his rightful place in our lives, that we would give him the place that he deserves and watch the transformation that takes place. Streets paved 